Today we're going to be looking at market equilibrium. So far we've looked at supply, we've looked at demand, and we've looked at, things, at the things that change them. And we've talked a little bit about how um, changes in supply and demand will affect price. But today we're going to see why. Why is it that when something is in short supply or high demand, the price goes up? Why is it when something has a low demand or has a high supply, is it that the price drops? Now, markets are always going to be in one of three conditions. A market is either going to be in a state of equilibrium, which means it's balanced, or it's going to be, have, be in a state of a shortage or a surplus. The equilibrium or the balance is always desirable. And in fact, markets will naturally gravitate towards the balance as long as there is no outside force that is determining the price. If we allow prices to be flexible, it will automatically go towards that equilibrium. So we would say that equilibrium is the price point where the quantity supplied is going to be equal to the quantity demanded. And that's the price point where everything that producers will put into the market, consumers will be willing and able to buy. Now, if a, if a market is not in equilibrium, it's either going to be in a shortage or a surplus. And so a shortage would be a price point where we have the quantities that consumers want to buy is exceeding the quantities that producers will put into the market. And then a surplus, it's just flipped. A surplus is where producers are supplying more quantity than, uh, than we as consumers want to purchase. So let's look at this market schedule for tomatoes. We have our prices listed here. And then um, at each price point here on the left side, these are the quantities of bushels that we as consumers will purchase. And then over here, these are the quantities of bushels that uh, producers will put into the market at these various prices. So our market clearinghouse price or our, our equilibrium price is $9 because at $9, producers will supply 30 bushels and we're going to buy 30 bushels. Now, any price below $9, we are going to be in a state of a shortage because our quantity demanded will exceed our quantity supplied. And then any price above $9, and we're going to have a surplus. So if there's a shortage, producers are happy. They're able to sell everything that they put into the market. Uh, when there is a surplus, it's the consumers. Every consumer who wants one at these prices will be able to get one, but producers will be left holding product that they cannot sell. Now, the only way to correct the shortage that we have at the price of 3 and $6 is for the price to rise. Well, it has to get back to this $9 for the market to balance. Any price higher than $9, and we have to see the price drop in order to correct uh, the, short, the, the surplus. So what that tells us is that um, shortages and surpluses can be correct. The way to correct a shortage is the price has to increase. The way to correct a surplus is the price has to decrease. Keep that in mind as we turn our paper over to the back side and we look at how changes in supply and demand impact those equilibrium prices and quantities. Now, what you saw on the front side, that chart, that uh, market schedule, we've just taken that information and plotted it on a graph. And so here's our supply curve, which shows us all of those prices and quantities producers will produce. And same thing for our demand curve, all of the prices and the quantities we'll buy at each price point. And so on the graph, equilibrium is always going to be represented by that price point and that quantity where, where supply and demand intersect. So at $9, quantity supplied is 30 and quantity demanded is 30. So always where our two uh, curves cross is going to be our equilibrium. Now, we know that demand and supply can change. So when there are changes in supply and demand, the market is going to be temporarily out of balance but it can self-correct, it can get back to an equilibrium. What we want to know is this new equilibrium, is the price going to be higher than the original or lower than the original? And same thing with the quantity. Is it going to be higher or lower than the original? So let's take a look at these scenarios. So the American Medical Association announces that eating tomatoes helps fight cancer. 
eating, it would be consuming. So this is going to be looking at the behavior of the consumer, so demand. Now, this would change our preferences for tomatoes. If we know it's going to help us fight cancer, uh, our preferences are going to increase. So that means that demand for tomatoes is going to increase. At all price point, we're going to see these quantities increase. Now, graphically, we're going to show an increase by shifting to the right. So let's shift that demand curve to the right, and we're going to label that curve D sub 1. All right, so we can see up here, this is the new equilibrium that we're going to get to, but it's not automatic. How do we get there? Well, in economics, we say that prices are sticky. So although our behavior as consumers has changed, this price of $9 is still the market price for tomatoes. And so now we're going to have a market that is out of balance. Nothing has changed for produ producers. They're still supplying 30 bushels, but now at a price of $9, you know, we, we're over here. We want to buy about 50 bushels, and so we've got a shortage now in the market. And what do we say is the only way to correct a shortage? Well, the price has to rise. So now let's look at our laws of supply and demand, because as the price rises, producers will be moving this way on their supply curve. The price is going to be increasing, and they're going to be putting more product into the market. But we as consumers, remember, when it comes to buying, price and quantity are inversely related, and so we're going to be moving this way on our demand curve. We're going to be reducing the, uh, the quantities that we will purchase, and eventually we're going to hit a new balancing price and a new equilibrium quantity. And so here is our new equilibrium price and quantity. And we can see that that new price is higher than the original. And this quantity, balancing quantity, is an increase from the original too. So we'll just finish out this explanation by indicating that the price has increased, meaning the equilibrium price. And we know that the quantity has increased too. So when demand increases, more product's going to be sold, and it's going to be sold at a higher price. Okay, let's look at the next scenario. Uh, for this scenario, though, we're going to change this. This should say decreased. I am so sorry. I meant to type that in as decreased and just had a brain freeze and put it in as increased. Now, if you printed this note sheet from uh, Canvas, it may already be corrected. But if you got one in class and you're just watching this again, remember, we changed this to decrease. Let me get the lights back on. Okay, I'm back in business. So population. If we think about population, the population has changed. Population was one of those things that will change demand. So population decreases. Therefore, that means we have fewer consumers. So it's logical that we would see all of these quantities decrease uh, at all price points because there's fewer consumers. So graphically, we're going to shift this curve to the left because a decrease always goes to the left. And boy, I just kind of drew that crazy. Okay, so we can see where our new equilibrium is going to be, but let's talk about how we get there. Remember, temporarily the market is going to uh, the market is going to be out of balance. You know, I'm going to redraw this just to make it a little more clear. Hey guys, this is real time here, so I'm going to just shift it a little further to the left so we can be clear. And there's my new equilibrium. Okay, so remember, this price of nine dollars is sticky. Nothing has changed for the producer. They're still putting 30 bushels into the market. But now we as consumers, because there aren't as many of us, we only want to buy 10. So the market is in a state of a surplus. What is the only way that producers can get us to, uh, to buy more tomatoes? Well, they have to lower the price. And so as the price starts dropping, we start increasing the quantities that we will purchase. We're like, oh, okay, we'll buy a few more tomatoes. But then producers start to cut back on what they'll put into the market because remember, at a lower price, it's less profitable for them. And so now 
we have a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. When the market adjusts back to balance, it gets back to a new equilibrium, we can see that that new equilibrium price of $6 is a decrease from the original and the equilibrium quantity is a decrease from the original. All right, let's move to this side. Okay, so Texas A&M develops a new fertilizer, makes each tomato plant produce more fruit. Produce, well, that's the behavior of, of, of course, the producer, and so I know we're looking at supply for this. And so what this is really telling me is that productivity is up. Productivity is up, which means my cost of producing has just gone down. Therefore, now remember, cost means what I have to give up as the producer. I'm giving up less as a producer to put this product into the market. Therefore, at all of these price points, I can put more product out into the market. So supply is increasing. Remember, graphically, we show an increase by shifting to the right. So let's shift that supply curve to the right and we're going to label it as an S sub 1 and let's talk about how do we get from here to here. Well, remember this $9, what's the word? It's sticky. We as consumers, nothing has changed for us. We still just want to buy 30 bushels of tomatoes at $9, but now because of this change in supply and this increase in productivity, producers can put 50 into the market. Well, there's a surplus. We're not going to buy all of that. Not at $9 anyway. And if the producers want us to buy more product, they've got to lower the price. So when there's a surplus, that price starts to drop. We'll increase what we're, what we're going to buy. Producers will start decreasing what they'll put into the market until we get to this new balancing price here. And so $6.40. And so we know that after the market corrects, it's going to be a lower price and our quantity is going to increase. So when there's more supply, more of that product is sold at a lower price. Okay, last scenario. Late spring freeze puts several tomato farms out of business. All right, so this is really the number of competitors or the number of producers, you could say it either way. And so there is a reduction in the number of producers. Therefore, that means at all of these price points, we're gonna see fewer tomatoes uh, going into the market. So supply is decreasing. And remember graphically, we're gonna show that by shifting our supply curve to the left. So let's show a left shift in supply and our, our equilibriums are easily identifiable, but how do we get here? Remember that this price of $9 is sticky. We as consumers still want to buy 30 bushels of tomatoes, but now because there are fewer producers at $9, producers can only put 10 bushels into the market. That's all they can put out there. And so we have a shortage. Um, you know, producers, it's not that they can't produce more than 10. It's just that they can't put more than 10 out into the market for $9. And so producers say, hey, you want me to put more tomatoes into the market? I can, but only at a higher price. So the price begins to rise and producers are putting more product out there. We as consumers respond and say, oh, higher price. I don't think I want to buy as many. And now we end up at a new equilibrium. And this equilibrium price of $12 is an increase from the original nine. And this equilibrium quantity of 20 is a decrease from the original of 30. So I'm gonna finish out this statement. The price is gonna increase and the quantity is going to decrease. Now, the reality is that uh, supply, it's not, it, there's no law, there's no rule that says that only supply can change and only demand can change. They can only change one at a time. The reality is that there are often times when we have both supply and demand uh, changing simultaneously. And when that happens, we're going to come up with 
with one of these being what we call indeterminate. So, for example, let's just say that these two scenarios were happening at the same time. So, while the population decreased, we also lost some producers. And so, that means that there's, when we look at this, look, here's, there's pressure on the price to decrease, but there's also pressure on the price to increase. And so, if both of these are happening simultaneously, we would say that price is indeterminate because we don't know for sure how it's going to change. Now, we definitely know that there's going to be less of it in the market. And so quantity we know is going to decrease, but we're not sure how the equilibrium price is going to change. We don't know if it's going to increase, if it's going to decrease, or it could even stay the same. We just don't know, and that's an indeterminate right now. Um, let's take, let's say what if these two were happening simultaneously? What if demand had decreased while supply uh, has increased? Well, this indicates that price is going to drop. This indicates that price is going to drop. But what about our quantity, our balancing quantity? And so if these two are happening simultaneously, we know that price is going to decrease, but quantity would be indeterminate. And so that question mark means indeterminate. When you have double shifts, a change in supply and a change in demand happening at the same time, graph them separately. Do not show them on the same graph. If you show them on the same graph, you will tend to think sequentially instead of simultaneously, and that will make all the difference.